In this video, I'll show you how to write an expository essay and explain what they are. Expository essays are very different to argumentative essays, so make sure you don't mess them up. You'll also notice that I refer to the expository essay template along the way. It's a template that I give to my students when they're writing expository essays. You're welcome to have it. It's in the description below. Hopefully, it'll speed up the process of writing an expository essay for you. Okay, so what is an expository essay? Well, the main thing we need to know is it's different from an argumentative essay, which is the most common form of essay, because an expository essay doesn't actually argue anything. It doesn't try to take one side of a perspective on an issue. Rather, it simply tries to explain, clarify, and provide in-depth information about a specific topic. So your analysis isn't going to conclude with a judgment about something. It's going to give simply a balanced explanation that demonstrates your depth of knowledge about the topic and helps whoever's reading your essay to also get a deeper understanding of the topic. So that means that your expository essay thesis statement is not going to express opinion. It's really important that you're not expressing opinion or else you might get in trouble for turning your essay into an argumentative essay. So here's the difference between an argumentative and an expository essay thesis statement. The argumentative one is subjective and it uses ought statements such as something should happen. It takes a side on one side or the other of an issue. On the other hand, an expository essay thesis statement is objective and it uses is statements. So it demonstrates that something is the way it is without taking a side on an argument. Let's look at some examples. So here, if we're using climate change as our thesis statement, an argumentative essay will try to argue one position on climate change. So I might say human-induced climate change is the primary driver of the catastrophic decline in polar bears' natural habitat. You can see it's using emotive language like catastrophic there. And then it, it says an ought statement. It says necessitating urgent global environmental policy changes to mitigate this effect. So it's saying this is what we should do. We should make policy changes. Whereas in an expository essay, isn't going to go that far. It's simply going to say there is a relationship between climate change and the decline in polar bears' natural habitats. And this is the relationship. It explains the relationship really clearly without inserting any emotion or subjective ideas about what should happen. It does is statements, not ought statements. Here's another one. So AI in healthcare. So an argumentative essay would use a phrase like should be. The integration of artificial intelligence in healthcare should be accelerated. It's taking a position on the issue. Whereas your expository one on the right hand side simply says is. It says advancements in artificial intelligence are transforming modern healthcare. So it's saying something is happening, not what should be happening. In the template pack that I mentioned that you can download, I have a list of sample thesis statement templates that you can use to see if any of them suit for you. There's, I think there's 15 or 16 different thesis statements for expository essays and likely one of them would fit for a first draft of a thesis statement for your expository essay. Okay, so now that you know how an expository essay differs from an argumentative essay, this is how we're going to structure our essay. We're going to provide an introduction, an orientation, a body, and a conclusion. Notice there, there is no evaluation or argumentation in the structure of the essay. So let's start with our introduction, which is on screen now, introduces the topic to the reader, demonstrates the relevance of the topic to the reader, introduces your thesis statement and signposts the structure of your essay. So when I say signpost the structure of your essay, you're gonna say, this is what's gonna be discussed first, this is what's gonna be discussed second, this is what's gonna be discussed third. So that the reader, when reading the introduction, knows exactly what to expect of the structure of the essay. So this is a very normal, introduction. The only way it's going to differ from an argumentative essay is your thesis statement is going to be an is statement, not an ought statement. Then we move on to our orientation paragraph, which usually ensures that the reader has a thorough understanding of the definition and parameters of the topic. So we all, when we're reading the essay, will have an agreed upon definition of all the terms and concepts because you've oriented the reader to these terms and concepts at the beginning. So oftentimes you'll say, you know, this is a scholarly definition of the topic here. So you start off with a very clear definition so that everyone knows what the topic's about. And then we move on to our body, which will usually be between three to up to 15 paragraphs, depending upon the expected word count. And this is where you're going to demonstrate your depth of knowledge about the topic. And let's dive into the body a bit more because it's really important you get the body correct. These are different types of body paragraphs for expository essays. And you'll notice that these types of body paragraphs aren't providing judgments or arguments. They're simply adding depth of understanding to the topic. So here are some 
examples of paragraphs you can use. One paragraph might describe something. Another one might define something. You might have paragraphs that explain the process from how one thing got from one step to the next step to the next step in a sequential order. You might have paragraphs that explain the cause and effect of different things. You might be able to compare and contrast the similarities and differences of subtopics within your essay. You might be able to classify things and breaking it down into subtypes of the topic. You might be able to provide examples, real life examples to help illustrate the point. And you could also provide some analytical paragraphs, make sure when you're analyzing things, stay objective, not passing judgment, but giving factual analysis. I know that was a really quick breeze through. So let's look at two types of body paragraphs for expository essays. One is a comparison and contrast paragraph. The sort of language you would be using is things like unlike A, B is. If your essay was an expository essay explaining what nationalism is, you can say unlike patriotism, nationalism is, and then you can compare and contrast nationalism to patriotism. You could also do problem and solution paragraphs. So a major issue is, and then a, to address this issue, one solution could be. Remember taking a very objective stance, not saying the solution should be, but the solution could be presenting a few possible solutions, right? Again, in the template pack below, I've got examples of how to start sentences from each different type of paragraph you would usually find in the expository essay. You can download that below. I know I'm going through this really quickly. That's why I'm providing those additional templates to add value if you want. Okay, and then after you've done all your body paragraphs with different types of paragraphs, such as comparing and contrasting or giving examples, we're going to get to our conclusion where we're going to reiterate the overall importance of the topic, reiterate our thesis statement. Remembering the thesis statement is an is statement, not a should be statement. And then reflecting on the implications and applications of the topic for the real world. Why should people care about this topic? In the templates that I provide for you, the introductions and conclusions follow my normal structure of the intro method, I-N-T-R-O, for the introductions and 5C conclusion method. You can get them in the expository essay template in the description below. Hopefully that's helpful to you. Remember to take your draft to your teacher to make sure it suits the expectations of your teacher before you submit. It's really important that you finish your essay early and then take it to your teacher so that you can make sure you're meeting the expectations in your specific class. Thanks for watching. If you're a student, like and subscribe. There are tons of tips on how to write essays on this YouTube channel.